Welcome back traders. I hope you're doing well. This video is about strategy quant X, algo wizard, bar and time commands. I got an email uh, from a viewer of the channel or probably I saw a comment. If you remember before I said uh, the uh, date and bar and time and algo wizard doesn't work correctly. Well, it's uh, some of it uh, still true and some of it not true anymore. So we can use it. I'll show you what's working and what's not and you can use it in your development. So let's jump in. Before we start, I would like to ask you to hit the like button as that helps Google push it to other traders and help the channel a lot. And if you like the content, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when a new video is uploaded to the channel. Now let's get back. Welcome back traders to Star Oasis channel. My name is Ali Casey. Uh, this video is about uh, strategy quant X, algo wizard, bar and time commands. I actually received an email or I saw a comment from a viewer of the channel. Unfortunately, I looked uh, all around for it and I couldn't find it. So please, if you are the viewer who emailed me this, please just post the comments uh, below and uh, so I can acknowledge you. I thank you for putting me back on this. The viewer just reminded me the bar and time these guys now are working. And of course, they used to work with me before, but not consistently. But after he mentioned it, I went again and did research on it. And I'm going to give you my feedback now on what's working and what's not. To start with, the bar and time help us to do date specific trades. And the simplest one is if we do, uh, most of you heard of sell and may and go away. And that applies to the S&P 500. So I loaded here S&P 500 trade station and one share since uh, it's, it's just a, um, a concept. To sell in May and go away, basically you go away till October. So you buy back in November. Let's do this. So bar and time. So buy month, bar month is November. So we'll buy in November and we'll sell in May. So bar and time. Bar month is May. And so that's the idea of the date. It's basically you, you can be specific to trade on which day, but regardless of the year or the day of the month or the week. So if we test this system now, we can see that trading every year and it's not skipping any year and starting on November 2nd, 4th, 2nd, and it's exiting on May 3rd, 2nd, 4th, 2nd. Those happens because when this is true, so every uh, on the on the close of every bar, it checks the condition. Is is today month is November, so then it will buy next day because it calculates at the close. So that's why you see uh, on the second. Now, why you sometimes see is on the fourth or on the third, it's because it happened that this day falls on a weekend. So let's examine this. So this is, for example, November 4th, 2019. And you can see that November 4th is a Monday. So on the close day of Friday, the condition was true and it issues the command to buy next bar. And next bar was the fourth because two and three is a weekend. And so that's why it falls on different days. Same thing goes on the exit. Now we know that this is working correctly. That's good. There is a condition is month first trading day. So if I do month first trading day and not including weekends. So theoretically that should be the same thing. It knows which day is the first and then it will trade on that day. So if we run a full back test, unfortunately it doesn't work. I tried it on stocks, futures and currencies 
the bugging thing is sometimes it does work <laughs> so it really bugs me you know when i don't know why why this is happening uh, this is all with all programmers unfortunately i wasted you know three hours couldn't find it sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so let's get rid of that one now the end of the month so if we do this is month last trading day again it should theoretically know and if we test it you see it works but it's not as what we liked the code says exit end of may what it's doing though it's finding the exit on end of may and exiting on the next bar and again i swear this sometimes works where it exit it finds the last day of the month and exits and sometimes it doesn't so after all the testing i did these two are not reliable the month first trading day month last trading day is not reliable now month first trading day i can solve it easily so if i go back to november i can say bar day of the month is greater or equal to one so now this will work this will always find the first bar of the month and to solve it here i can do again bar uh, day of month but now it's tricky because I, you know, sometimes the last day is 31st, sometimes 28. So the easiest thing I can come up with is that somewhere around the 28th, of course, February will not work. But for example, for November, it will, for May, it will work. And again, it's greater or equal to 28th. And then we can see now it will exit sometimes right on the edge yes 28 29 1 the reason i put greater or equal is because i don't want to i don't want to skip so let's do 25th so we know for sure let's say 22 we know for sure it's not gonna skip any trade so you see now this is 28 trades and if i do 28 still 28 trades didn't skip and 29 is because at one point it will fall on the weekend see it, it did already it missed three trades and those trades happen in 16 11 so 2010 so 2010 we couldn't exit in may because that day falls on the weekend the problem again as i told you this sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't and because of that, it's not reliable. So again, I cannot use this. The ones you cannot, you can use for sure. I tested them and they work very good. Anything that uh, starts with bar. So any command that preceded by the word bar works. So all these bars works and then all these bars work except for this one. And then all the things that uh, proceeded with current, it doesn't work. I assume this is meant for live trading. In any case, I don't know why. There is no documentation on it. I did all my testing. All the bar commands work. And uh, that's good because we can use that. And I'll show you how we're going to use it. So how we can use this? Well, obviously, the most important part I want to use it is with Season X. Season X is a, is a tool to find uh, seasonal uh, patterns in uh, stocks, currencies, futures. And let's take, for example, this one. So Skywork Solution, you know, there is this pattern from January 26th to February 25th. That's good. Now we can test this. So let's go to settings and let's pick stocks and sky daily so the date is january 26 till february 25th 
So bar month is January and the date is bar day of month is twenty six and then exit on February twenty fifth. I can copy this and paste it here. So 25th. So the first thing, first thing you're going to notice is I put these dates wrong on purpose just to show you. Because remember, it calculates at the end of the bar. That means in order to get 26, I have to put 25th here. And I'll show you. So you can see they're all after 26. And they're all after 25th. So first thing we need to do is to always decrease the amount of days by one. So now I can compare with, so let me squeeze this here and let's compare it with this. And I will show you now because I put the equal sign, again, same problem, it skipped some dates because it's looking for exactly this date. While Strategy Quantex knows already that, for example, in 2008, January 26, it doesn't work. So in order to fix this here, we need to do the same thing. We need to do greater or equal. And you can see now the trade is gonna go up from 21 to 230. Six, of course, because we have the data. Now, let me put the data since 2006 so we can match it with the strategy uh, with the season X. I think because it's uh, because trade station looks for 50 bars before it starts calculating, so we need to go back to yeah, this should do it. So now we're starting in January and you can see 26, 26, 28. And you look now in 2009, it started on 27th here in 2009, it started on January 26. This is a very important issue now that I need to bring your attention to. Data is a big thing. And in fact, hedge funds spends uh, lots of money on clean data. The quality that the data is provided with SQX is not as uh, accurate, I would say. I tested it with many stocks, future currencies, and they are not accurate. I don't know why. The first two months you go back, they are matching and then they shift. So you can see here, I even tested with uh, Yahoo and I tested with TradingView and I tested with TradeStation and the data doesn't match. Now, this is good and bad. It's bad because they, they don't match. The good part is I use this as a noise. I know they don't match, but they don't differ that much. So for example, right now we know they're not matching the exact dates. So that's good. I mean, we should, even if we don't get 80% winning rate, we shouldn't get 50 because of this noise, because we just skipped one day or the price is a little bit different. And we can ma check it now. So you can see this strategy is the winning rate is 73% and here it's 80%. This strategy made 36 points and we made here 41 points. So you can see it's not exact, but that's good. As I said, because if you consider that noise, like, you know, when you do in Monte Carlo testing and you add noise to the price, this is the same thing. It's like noise. You're testing the same seasonal patterns and you see if it works with different days around the same date and different prices around the same price. So, but now I can test other things. So I know the pattern works between February 11 and March 6. But probably I don't need to enter sometimes at all, like we, uh, like we saw in the market regime. 
like we saw in the, the oil portfolio, if the market regime is low volatility, then we shouldn't trade because most likely we will not find a profitable trade intraday. If it's not intraday, there is also other parts where if the price is trending down, so I should filter that out. So here now we can all add those filters. First, let's add a simple filter, which is the close is higher than the, since I'm going long, let me try if the close is higher than the five day moving average. I know this pattern works. If the close is higher than the five day moving average, that means it's already trending up. Then let me go long and let's see what that does to the uh, system. So currently, as you can see, it's uh, 54,011 percent drawdown and 19 trades. It's still 19 trades, but somehow we made more money and less drawdown. So how did that happen? It's the same number of trades. And I'll show you now how did that happen. So remember, the entry was the 10th. So now you can see that the entry sometimes is the 25th, 21st. So we're not skipping the trade, but we're only entering after the price goes above the five day moving average. And so for example, here it happened uh, 12 days later, here it happens again 12 days, here three days later, and so on and so forth. So I enhanced my uh, pattern just by following the trend when the price moved above the moving average. Basically now we have the ability to pick any seasonal uh, pattern from season X and add to it filters to, uh, well, first of all, we can verify that the strategy is working with different data, which is really good, as I told you, on stocks, currencies, and futures. So that's, uh, uh, let's say, a verification on the pattern from Season X. Plus, you can add these filters to enhance the strategy, add a stop loss, add a profit target, which you cannot do with the Season X. So now they complement each other very well. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please do email me or post them below in the comments and I'll be happy to answer all of them. And if you like the content, please do subscribe and share so Google can push it to other traders. And until the next video, stay safe and I'll see you soon.